So now we're in this alert state ready to do something or to actually respond. As the danger subsides and as the adrenaline starts to subside, then we move into what is known as the HPA system. So this, the H stands for hypothalamus, the P stands for the pituitary, which is also a gland that's in the brain, and the A stands for the adrenals. So the hypothalamus now stimulates the pituitary. Remember, it did stimulate the adrenals directly, but now the hypothalamus is stimulating the pituitary. The pituitary then stimulates the adrenal glands. So here we're talking about um, we're talking about a different set of hormones and a different set of chemicals, which ultimately stimulate the adrenal glands to release cortisol. And we understand that cortisol is an important aspect in the functioning of our body because what cortisol does is cortisol allows our body to remain alert. So the adrenaline alerts us and gets us into this alarm phase and the cortisol allows us to stay there. And this is important for us to be able to carry through with the entire fight or flight response. So what is the role of the cortisol? The role of the cortisol is to, is to allow the heart rate to remain elevated. Remember, we're still going to have to respond or continue to respond to the threat or to the danger. It also puts the body into such a state that the glucose that is released into the body is not stored. The cortisol then says, okay, baby, we've got to use this glucose. And glucose, of course, is our energy. So now, remember in the alert phase, we had an increased respiratory rate. We had more oxygen available to the tissues. Mm -hmm. But oxygen is not the only thing that the tissues require in order to move. Well, the muscles also require energy. And energy is in the form of glucose. So the cortisol says, mm -mm, I'm going to dampen the insulin because I don't need to store this energy. I need to use it right now. And therefore, the energy becomes available to the body. And so we can move ourselves or get out of the imminent danger. And in a normal situation, as the threat recedes, the cortisol levels also decrease. And this is a feedback loop. And now we get information going back to the hypothalamus. And so that whole system, that whole loop, the HPA system is decreased because the parasympathetic system, which is the other side of the sympathetic system, starts to put the brakes on and our bodies and systems start to return back to a normal resting phase. Remember that the connection here, the connection to fear, is that fear is a perception of danger or a perception that something is going to give us um, trouble or something is going to cause us harm. Subside. 